What I want to talk about is about massing a little bit, just the general, creating a general mass of the object. So something like that, you know, being a general, general shape. And then looking at how you can look at this mass differently. Like if I looked at it and said like, maybe it's up higher and it's shorter and squatty. Maybe it's something that's very long and elegant, you know? And then I have to consider like some basic things like off of a horizontal, where does this come up to, this, this bottom of the skull? And so if I draw a clock, you can think about this being 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and see where does the skull really come up to? And the skull comes up to, I would guesstimate, one, two, a little less than two o'clock. It's probably up at like 2.30. So you'd say if that's one, that's two, it's right about 2.30. Two, yeah, one, two. It's a little less than that, so it's up, up here a bit. Okay, so you say that's the angle the bottom of this is at, so it's something like that, that I want that whole skull to come in on the bottom for a basic shape. Now I can also look at things like the relationship of the height of this whole object to the width of this whole object from here all the way over to here, and say how high is it to how wide? And what I'm doing is I'm taking a measurement right now that's from the top to the bottom saying, if that's one unit right there, then what is it left to right this way, right? So you take one unit, then I turn it sideways and say it's one and almost a half units. So I go, that's one, and then one would be there, and that would be two, two right there. So that means one and a half would be about here. So that means my object has to fit within here, which would mean I'd take that little section off and say my whole object has to fit within that rectangle right there. Okay, that would be the basic relationships. Now, other things you'd wanna look at, and I know that this object is somewhat of a triangular object, something like this, um, but I can't quite know yet what I'm gonna do, but I know that I wanna look for like uh, basic relationships. So one of the relationships I could look at would be say this object is a, is a triangle in essence. Now, I know that it's also a very basic form, meaning it's not a flat shape, like a circle would be a flat shape, right? And it would have a height and a width to it. But a form would have height, width, and depth to it, as most things in reality do. So they come across and down and across and down and around and around and around. So this object, in essence, is more shaped like a wedge than it is a triangle. So it's something like this, right? But then I said the bottom was up at this weird angle. So what you start to see is something like that, right, to start. And then it goes up from there and then it goes across and then it comes down. So it's gonna be something like this, but it's gotta fit into this rectangle. So now I'm gonna bring this rectangle down here. I'm gonna say it's about that high, right? Same box that I have up above. Make sure it's the same, right? And then fit that, that object in there. So it's something like this and this and this. And that angle has to be at two o'clock. So I bring that down, right? And I have something like this. Now, when I look at that, the skull has a top and a side and a top and a side and a top and a side. And somewhere up in here-ish, it's got this hole in the side that is the, the eye bone. And it's got teeth down here and whatnot that swoop around. Uh, they're higher up than I expect, and then the nose comes down, and then the nose comes up over here, and there's a dent in here and a warp up there. I'm looking at the top of the skull has a curve. Now, it's interesting, with a curve, frequently I put my pencil on a curve, because if you look at a curve and you lay a pencil across the top of it like that, close one eye and picture, where's the apex of the curve? Sometimes the curve's off to the side, like this. You notice how the apex is here, and there's a beautiful triangle in here, which is negative shape we'll talk about later causes these shapes right here to appear, right? Um, but think about some of these curves and connections, like down the side of the skull I'm noticing, when I hold my pencil out in front of me, it's actually a little off of noon. Remember noon, it's a little this way, kind of towards 11, so this side actually leans in a bit, wraps around. So these are the basic forms, and you start to get this kind of fundamental skull shape here. Now one of the other things we can look at is just considering the line quality. You can see when I started, I started very loosely and loopy. I could decide maybe to, to draw the same object with a lot of angularity and sharpness and sort of carving out this skull with a, a, a very hard line. Or I could decide to carve out the same skull with a very soft sort of buttery, you know, curly Q line and let it be sort of gentle and and, uh, and then I can even mix the two. I mean, that's another option. But I could start to do things like this 
and say, oh, this skull's very uh, soft and gentle, or this skull to me is more, and this is kind of the emotional quality of something is the line, you know, and just say, yeah, it's got a lot of really rough stuff on it. Uh, you know, rah, 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 rah. you get the drift. And now what I can do in the end is consider value massing. What that would mean is I would draw the same shape or form as it's three-dimensional, not two-dimensional, right? But I could start to knock it out more based on value. So what I notice is the skull is much lighter than the area around it. So what I'm going to do is just start by darkening in the paper around it. You'll notice I'm using the side of my pencil a little bit. And then I could darken some of the areas that are around the skull, darken in that eye socket, darken in the little bone behind the socket, and then look for some of the darker areas that are significantly darker. So I'm looking for what is the gray, which is out here, the white that is here, and now I'm starting to darken in what we'd consider some of the blacks or darker areas. So I'm going gray, white, and black, right? And I'm knocking them in, and then we have a pretty good skull starting up, right? Quietly, I'm going to focus for a minute. It's a lot darker back here, I'm realizing. Hold on, let me see the relationship between the eye to the skull. Now, what you see me doing, something I always seem to forget in the beginning, but I'm looking at relationships a lot of one thing to another here. So, what you see me do is and instead of drawing the eye and then perfecting the eye and getting it all right and darkening and lightening it and doing whatever, and then all of a sudden realizing, where's the eye over here, you know, and drawing it in and then, and then I draw it in for a second, whatever I draw, some looping eye with the dark at the bottom. There's no relationship between these two objects right now. What I want to do is say, where's the top of this meet the, the side of this or the edge of this? And what I realize when I do that is the top of this line, and I just lined my pencil up like this in reality and looked. I notice that the top of this eye hole, which is right here, this top, lines up at the bottom of the other eye hole. So in here, this top lines up with the bottom of this side. And so I realize that the, the skull goes like that, and the dark part of this eye is down here above the top of this eye. It's just above the top of this eye hole here. Got me? Pretty cool. Okay, that gives me a proper position. I can also look, what's straight above this is kind of the apex of the skull, meaning that's the highest point of the skull, meaning it has to go lower over here, so I'll lower that down a little bit. You see, that gives the form kind of a scoop back that way. Just like you saw me sort of scooping the form in this right here, I say, if you touch the surface, like here, the skull comes up on the side, and then it bends over like that, kind of turns a corner. So a lot of times you'll see me sort of adjusting a form, kind of pushing it down, I'll say. That means kind of down and back, or I'll be lifting it up, which would mean this is kind of down and back, right? And then up would be taking that same line and lifting it up a bit towards more of a, a vertical. So I'm lifting it, which would mean the form would kind of come up versus pushing it down and making it go down. Um, right now, I have these black teeth in here on this form. Dark in this paper is a lot darker back here. There's a little bit of a weird darkness in here. And now what I'm doing is something called contour, which we practiced a little bit and we'll talk about again. But I'm drawing very more, more precise lines, being a little more careful about my detailing. And not what I'm not doing now is drawing a very loose gesture, but I'm actually looking at the exact line that would form, you know, that little bony bit or whatever. And it's a very careful line. It's, it's not gestural anymore, meaning gestural is more loose and uninhibited to something a lot more controlled and demanding. Um, all right. Starting to get the idea. That's starting to appear a little bit like a skull. Needs a fair amount of work, but we're off to a good start. I don't feel so badly about it. Um, I'm going to push this back up in. The teeth come down. And then I could even do a little line down here for some of the dark teeth that cut in there. It's starting to come alive, right? A little bit, a little bit. Give me some credit, huh? <laughs> uh, this comes around here. It's darker down here, darker in here. That's, there you go. That's the beginning 
of a skull. Now what you notice when I deal with value is in value drawings we don't use line so much to define an edge. To use line to define an edge would be something like this and then if you darken one side a little bit you have this big black line going down the center. If you define it kind of lightly, which you may not even be able to see that line in the video, I can then define the edge with a value. You don't see the line in between it anymore. You just see the value that I drop in and I can drop in a dark value or a light value or whatever I want, progressively making it darker, right? for whatever reason I need, but there's no line left here. Whereas this one, it's kind of hard to get rid of that line as I darken it. You know, it'll disappear on the darker side, but the dark line is still showing out here where, where I have the lighter area, especially if I had a dark line and I had a very light area, it would always be there. And in reality, we don't see lines, we see edges. So this is edge. Now back to the beginning, if we review a little bit, you have a loose sketch, kind of a gestural form, right? We could gesture hard, we can gesture soft and liquid. We can pay attention to some of the angles that occur on an object. Pay attention to the shape versus the form of an object. And then what angle that form is actually at in relationship to earlier information. Whether it is a flat shape, right, and a 3D form. And then we can start looking at things like the curves, the angle of a particular uh, form because the, the angle has to bend to actually make the form bend. If the form is round, then somehow we have to bend our line to be round like that or else the form will appear flat. Okay, now we just started on this, but we could keep going. The form is also going back this way. It kind of tucks itself down, comes down this way, it wraps around this way. Those teeth are a little darker down here, I see. Skull's darker in here, so I'm wrapping this line. So when I come up out of the teeth, they come up, 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 and then they wrap way around the other side, and it gets quite dark back here on my skull. And then this skull on the top, the line is kind of going like this, but there's a moment where it dents in, and then it continues, and then it dents in and continues, and dents in and continues. So what's happening here, you could see, there's sort of a, a dent appearing in the object because the curve is going one way and then if we reverse the curve and go the other way, we end up with this little dent in the object. So I end up with a dent in here, a dent in here, a dent in here and then over the top, which is very light so I don't have to touch it. A little bit dented in there, dented in there. You start getting this object. You see it. I think you get the basic idea and I think that my elongation was too much. So I'm going to shorten it now, pull back and correct my drawing and that's what we do over and over and over in drawing. Just sort of humbly admit that you don't see the reality <laughs> until you actually see it pretty clearly and, and brightly. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful, and uh, we'll talk more this week. Bye. Hello again. I wanted to address a very fundamental thing which we mentioned in the last uh, video, the first video about gesture actually, which was form, which is three-dimensional form. Three-dimensional form is differentiated from shape. Shape, the shape of this object would be just a triangle, right? And that's a flat shape. It has height and it has width, but it doesn't have depth. And if you look at this object, it has height, it has width, and it has depth we go this way. So it has three dimensions. We could think of it like this as well. Here's a shape. It's very flat. Here's something that looks just like a shape to start, but then if I fill in the inside, it has three dimensions to it, right? So now, what's causing this? If you look at these objects, it's interesting. This one has a straight line and a straight line, right? This one has straight lines on it, but the lines almost wrap around. These lines seem to wrap around, meaning they turn a corner. And when they turn that corner, the form itself bends. So instead of being a flat triangle, it actually goes like this and bends around a corner. This circle becomes a sphere if we bend the lines, right? We just bend the line around. So anytime you want to move across a form, you must bend the line. The more you want the form to bend, the more you have to bend the line. So watch something like this. If I make a gentle curve, it'll feel like this object, whatever it is, has a little bit of a bend in it, right? But if I start wrapping it more and more, you see the object starts to curl more, curl up, and we can almost imagine like a sheet of paper curling around. You catch the back of it here, and then the front of it over here, and the paper wraps around itself. Got me? Uh, it's sort of flipping in and out on itself. So it goes up and then it goes over. Uh, I do this as a kid. I used to draw ribbons, which is fun to do like this. And then you just draw, let's see if I can do it, a piece of the form like this. It wraps out like that, comes around the back, it goes like that, 
comes out like that. That may be a lousy one, but you can see what's happening. It's sort of flipping on itself in and out. Um, a lot of times I'll also take like a, just a simple rectangle of a sheet of paper and I'll think if I, if I bent it right there and creased it, okay, I could draw that same shape on the bottom, but then I'd have to bend the top piece. So I'd have to bend it one way or the other. If I, if I bend it forward, it would kind of go like this. Got it? So it would appear to bend and these lines would come around this way, right? Watch my hand right now. See how long my fingers are? If I start to bend them, they get shorter. If I start to bend them more, they get shorter yet and shorter yet until they disappear. If I go to block in this basic object, I would say, okay, it's something like this with a top and a side and it's round like this, kind of coming across. I can see right at the side, the eye comes in back here wraps up. I'm looking at some basic shapes. It leans in, remember, a little past 12 o'clock this way. It peaks over here, so I understand that. Comes around here, it dips way in over here, comes down. Then I have to measure, remember, it was, it would about fit into that proportion, one by one third. So if this is where the bottom's going to be and that's where the top's going to be, that's one unit from top to bottom. So I take that one unit, it's kind of a big one, right? Grab it and go one, and it's only going to be a third of this, about a third to a little bit more. So right there is where it has to end. So something like that. It's shorter than I expect every time. I'm sort of surprised by that. Um, the teeth come out of here. They dip down a bit. They go up again. And now I still can't resist adding a little length to it just because of what my eyes feel. Now, what I just did is I added length because it's not what I see or what I measure, but it's what I feel and it's what I think the object might be doing to me. What I feel, it's like more of a dance or something with the object. So that's making a subjective decision, not a very objective decision. I'm not using what I measure, I'm using what I think about it a little bit. What I feel about it, I feel the object is longer, so I'm stretching it out. And that is your prerogative as an artist. So you see, this is basically starting to look a little bit like a skull. Let me get some of the details in and I'm gonna spend some time. What you see me doing right now is I'm adjusting the line qualities a little bit, making them more sensitive. Instead of them having been very loose and sketchy, I'm starting to find some of the nuances in them. This is called contour, which will be the second thing we do. Right now we're working off of gesture. This whole discussion has been about gesture. The next one will be about contour. So let's keep going. We actually did a little contour study in class this week. So, get around, and there you are. Let's get some of those gnarly teeth in there. Uh, gee whiz. Uh, okay. And you can see, I don't think anybody would argue that it starts to look like somewhat of a skull, even if it's very basic.